Um, the first thing that I thought I would share with everyone um, is the results of a study that was published recently uh, doing an analysis of a national pharmacy database looking at PrEP prescriptions. And it noticed that um, this database analysis, it did some modeling. It found that the anticipated PrEP prescriptions declined by more than 20% between March of 2020 and March of 2021. Um, it was 22% lower overall and 25% lower for those with new prescriptions. I thought this was, this was interesting given our scope of practices farms as being able to initiate PrEP prescriptions and also a commentary on the pandemic and perhaps either patients are seeking these out less or providers, um, including pharmacists attention are being drawn more to other things. So just to remind everyone, this is part of our scope of practices pharmacists in California. And remember that um, this is still an important service to provide for patients. The next few things that I wanted to talk about a little bit are a little bit more specific to COVID. So um, talking a little bit about vaccines, so the Pfizer um, BioNTech vaccine or Comirnaty has been submitted for an um, emergency use authorization for individuals or for children less than um, five years of age. The Moderna or the Spike vax vaccine now has full FDA approval for um, individuals 18 years and older. And the Novavax vaccine, which has been a little bit late to the party, um, is now filing for an emergency use authorization for adults. So this would be four potential COVID vaccines available for use in the US for adult patients. Um, also interestingly about vaccines, there is a California Senate bill, um, 866, co-authored by Senators Weiner and Senator Pan, that would potentially allow individuals um, or minors um, 12 up to 18, so people 12 and older to consent to receiving recommended vaccines. The current language, so this bill was just introduced um, in January, but the current language does include all vaccine providers. And I emphasize this is current language because as we'll learn as we talk a little bit more about legislative processes, Sometimes um, bills do get amended as part of the approval process. However, um, I think this may be of interest for us as pharmacists to advocate for ourselves to be a vaccine provider um, should this bill pass. Another interesting vaccine um, piece of information is the potential for a nasal vaccine. So Bharat Biotech, and I may or may not be pronouncing that correctly, but this is an Indian pharmaceutical company, um, has an adenovirus vectored intranasal vaccine for COVID-19. Um, it's currently in phase one trials for humans. And in looking at this a little bit earlier today, it's been trialed in a population of about 70 healthy adults. Um, the results are not yet available. But the preclinical studies done in animals did show that this was effective at um, preventing COVID vaccine. So of course, this might be a nice option to have for individuals who were afraid of vaccines because of their needle phobia. Also of interest thinking about COVID um, is the concept of cost sharing. So as many of us might remember, early in the pandemic, um, most out-of-pocket costs related to COVID-19 hospitalizations were waived from third parties, co-pays, et cetera. However, as the pandemic has progressed, and particularly with the um, introduction and the widespread um, implementation of vaccines, nearly 75% of the largest health plans, so these are the top two health plans in every state, um, are no longer waiving the cost-sharing requirements for COVID-19 treatment. And I think this is particularly notable if we consider the prevalence of the vaccines and the encouragement for everyone to get vaccinated and, and boosted, et cetera. Um, and there may be you know, more of a financial burden on patients for getting um, these treatments. And then also um, of interest, and many of you may have heard about this a little bit already, um, Mark Cuban has pioneered his own online pharmacy. It's creatively named as the Mark Cuban Cross Plus Drug Company. It's focusing primarily on generics and the pricing model 
is manufacturer's price plus 15% plus a $3 pharmacist fee. So a, a one day last week, I poked around a little bit and looked for some medications um, through the online cost system from the Mark Cuban Pharmacy and found that a lot of them are still fairly pricey, but I wanted all of you, if you weren't already to be aware of this in case you have patients to come in and ask about this. So those are the few items that I thought would be of interest for all of us to talk about tonight. So I always like to conclude with asking, you know, what do you find is going on in your practice? 